Hello everyone. Okay, yay. Okay, my name is Jeff Huang. I'm the moderator for you guys today. I have been living with the service for more than 15 years. So um, today's event is the first of three installments of joint events between UN and the Service International. Today's event will be 75 minutes. We will have three keynote speakers. So if you have any question, during the process, please post your question in the chat room. We will have a question and answer session after all the three keynote speeches. And uh, before we jump into our keynote speeches, please allow me to give you some background information. Service International. Service International is a non-profit organization for peace, promoting dialogue and reconciliation through an international network of hosts and travelers. The purpose of the network is to build world peace, goodwill and understanding by providing opportunity for personal contacts among people of different cultures, backgrounds and nationalities. As an NGO with a mission since 1949 of promoting peace and with a presence on all continents. Service International firmly believes that there can be no lasting peace without economic and social equity. Substantial reduction in poverty is therefore a crucial prerequisite in ensuring peaceful coexistence and cooperation globally. Very fortunately, today we have three keynote speakers. All of them are from Service Taiwan. Some of them may have served the local communities for more than two decades. Some of them may have been collaborating with local governments in mining data and reveal the impact of the society on female citizens and the other way around. And some of them have successfully facilitated the growth of local NGOs. And most importantly, all of them are service members. And all of them have shown that they have female power in their life and in their work. So, please, without any further ado, allow me to introduce you the first keynote speaker, Ms. Vicky Liu. And she is now serving the senior learning centers in the Zhongshan district in Kilong City in North Taiwan. Please join me to give Ms. Liu a warm welcome. Hello, everyone. I'm Vicky. Uh, incredible grateful to serve us international for giving me this uh, plentiful to share my in promoting lifelong learning. And uh, thank you all my friends from around the world who have uh, joined us online. Uh, it's a uh, 10, 35 minute evening here in Taiwan, but uh, I'm still brimming with energy to discuss this important topic. Lifelong learning is uh, is a vital for personal uh, development for me with over 35 years in education i had a privilege to teach both children and uh, adult especially uh, learning needed to need of the elderly now uh retire i I devote my time to the Elderly Learning Center, where I continue to champion lifelong learning. Before I, uh, before I start today's topic, allow me to talk a little bit about the gender issue, especially society like uh, Kilong have a uh, traditional favorite boys over girls. In the past the textbooks, you see the teach that the daddy should read a newspaper while mommy should do housework. And there was a, a revelation idea of passing down all the property to boys. Education plays a crucial role in promoting gender equality 
where our attitude have a change. In uh, Stephanie's in recent time, some older generation, particularly in rural area, still still rural type. I live in Keelong, in the north of Taiwan. It is just a 40, 40 minutes driver from, from Taipei. Keelong used to be a bustling uh, trading port and it's a still got uh, that old charming. This day is become quite uh, the tourist spot with a lot of cushion ship stopped by the Keelong port. We got famous delicious uh, uh, food at the Keelong Temple Night Market and the view are just stunning. Keelong's population is getting old. We are now ranked 50 uh, among Taiwan's aging city. According to the February uh, 2023 census in Taiwan, 80% uh, 80.5% uh, uh, of uh, the population is uh, age 65 and over. In Keelong City, it is uh, even higher than 20.5%. Uh, we all feature in super age society. 50, uh, 50 years ago, I can find a, a kid in row uh, in school. The whole village is a particular old, old forest with hardly can any children around. Some public school have uh, even had uh, to shut down. Uh, so uh, since uh, 2008, the ministry has been promoting lifelong learning for the citizen. And uh, uh, for the citizen age 55 and uh, up, offering them structured educational program. They are set up a learning center in the different area and uh, they are currently uh, 369 senior learning center, including uh, Kilong Zhongshan Senior Learning. This aim uh, to achieve for main goal, lifelong learning, health and happiness, independence, and the social participate. Our old people help old people is a key concept at the elderly learning center. We uh, the uh, we have a um, uh, the curriculum is in divide in on two three part required course elective course based on interest and the course uh, that involve giving back to the community at uh, senior learning center senior can join or start a group of same interest allow the elderly uh, to contribute and uh, serve, uh, serve as other finally reach master series of uh, self uh, actual, actual lives. Uh, in Keelong, uh, about 80% uh, of participate uh, in, at the learning uh, elder learning center are uh, women. They enjoy handicraft uh, course through uh, through learning activity. Women can help a woman make a friend, become a volunteer, and uh, they become happier and uh, held together. We offer many courses uh, to improve economic uh, capacity, as as the say goes, food is uh, uh, the god of people. We provide a variety of uh, cooking course, uh, including baking, jam, making, and uh, uh, food preparation, all incorporation, the concept of health eating. They enjoy uh, learning how to baking, and uh, then how to package and sell their creations. We also, uh, uh, we ask a fruit vendor uh, for fruit that uh, are close to expire and uh, use them to make a product like a jam to sell. The peer can uh, use uh, a detergent. This is a concept of circular economic. Uh, 
We also teach them how to uh, in cooking in and healthy eating and how to make powder can sell. We use recycled material to make art. For example, uh, we turn a recycled playing car into handicraft that, that can appreciate uh, in value and, uh, and uh, be sold for profit. We teach handicraft uh, such as a cabin with uh, an electric pan on wood to create a card. We sell all these learning outcomes include food, uh, crepe, jam, and uh, handicraft turn them into money. Intergeneration learning can enhance the self worth and is a key focus of our course. We offer class suitable for, for both older and young people. This education model not only promotes the exchange of knowledge and experience, but also uh, foster much. Uh, mature understanding and uh, respect each other. Let's see the video. This is a key long city.最早以前为什么叫流浪者是因为所有的人口大概有百分之八十都是外来的在这么落根然后有很多人在这边吃各式各样的食物三鲜呢用这个咖喱来炒那个味道非常特别那就是鸡中阿妈炒他咖喱的
can uh, deeply understand in our community culture. Uh, this is also a partnership for SDGs. Over the year, we had a member from the United States and Spain visit our school and the elderly learning center, explore Kilong and uh, learn about our local culture. Our Korea friend also visit uh, Kilong to test the traditional sneak. I invited a couple of uh, a couple from India, Ashok and Venus. He uh, volunteered to teach breath yoga with uh, mudra at our community elderly center. Vina also cook Indian uh, cook with uh, the school children. Such a kind of uh, cultural exchange is very meaningful. Ashoka and Vina uh, feel very uh, valuable and uh, leave a deep memory of uh, their trip in the Taiwan. Also uh, benefit our community uh, elderly and uh, become open mind and uh, board their horn and uh, meet a new friend from around the world. Uh, let's see the uh, news TV. 以呼吸抗老化为主题，来自印度的阿萨克结合了印度瑜伽的传统智慧，包括了手印。呼吸练习和正念冥想，为中山乐林学习中心的长者提供了一个丰富的身心灵体验。Mudras, which is yoga in the hands, because senior citizens they cannot do different postures of the body that is asanas related to yoga, so they can make mudras with the fingers and then they can also improve health with the help of mudras. I taught them. Ten important mudras for general health and general mental ability, so they can improve upon their certain regular diseases. So they have enjoyed that session and they liked it. And I taught them how to do walking during rainy season. If you cannot go out inside the house for a small space, how you can walk and get the same benefit. Walking outside, walking four kilometers. So that also I taught them, and they enjoyed that. Okay. Uh, finally, I want to thank the Minister of Education for their strong support our local elderly learning center. Uh, if any uh, have a, if you have any talent to teach. For free, welcome you to Kilong, and uh, feel free to contact me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Miss Liu. And the、um, it has been very inspiring, as you can see in the chat room. And I would love to remind you guys again that if you have any question, please don't hesitate to post it in the chat room, so that in the end of the presentation, we will have the presenter answer your question. And、uh, Miss Liu has been working. Uh, for the local community for more than two decades, and currently she's the executive director of Service Taiwan, also the director of Kilong Community College Foundation, and she's also the executive director of the Senior Learning Center of Kilong City's Zhongshan District, overseeing the daily operation and administration of more than twenty senior learning centers. So she's a superwoman from my perspective. And more than that, I think her approach shows this kind of button-up tradition in our community management. But more than that, in the formulating of policies, we also have button-down approach. And that brings us to our second keynote speaker, Professor Shi Shu Zhen, and she's now working in the in Institute of Community Healthcare. Of the nursing college at the National Yangming Jiaocheng University in Taiwan, and she has been the leading data miner for demographic studies in Taiwan. So I think she's going to give us a very insightful picture of the demographic situation. 
situation in Taiwan, especially after the keynote speech, we shall have our own answer to the question: What it is means to be a woman to be in Taiwan. So please join me to give her a warm welcome. Okay. Oh, thank you very much for the just introduction. And following the biggest introduction, uh, we'd like to have some um academic uh, exploration. Uh, we'll I'll set uh, the topic as uh, gender health, uh, social economy, and uh, community participation, especially, especially focused on the middle age and the older adults in Taiwan. This is uh, this is uh, uh, our um research team. Okay, the first map I'd like to show you, I think everyone know that there's a, there are different life expectancy uh, between men and women in the world. Yeah, um, like- 老师,你没有放影片,放,你还停留在第一页。都没有跑吗? 完全没有跑，所以而且太小张了，你可能要放大。我很不好意思跟你讲中文，对，因为你没有注意听。Uh, okay. uh, sorry, we have some tech technical problem. Um, okay. Okay, so how this is our topic. Yeah, uh, we like not only explore about the uh, uh, gender and the poverty, we like to focus on the community participation. Uh, just like the uh, Vicky's uh, uh, introduction, uh, she, she introduced a lot of interesting community activity. So this is our team. And the first one, I'd like to show you the map about the difference uh, between men and women's uh, life expectancy in the world. Yeah, we can see a lot of difference. Uh, so women will live longer than the men a lot. Uh, especially, I think the, the in Taiwan, we, uh, that's about uh, uh, six to seven years uh, difference. And Okay, and then uh, next one, I'd like to introduce about the labor force and the unemployee rate in Taiwan. You can see four groups here. And uh, there, especially in the middle age and the senior center, they have the employment is, has a big difference between men and women. And when they are a, uh, disabled, um, yeah, they they tend to uh, not can uh, not to work. So uh, this group is our focus uh, to study because uh, they are uh, strong. They they have a um, different job and uh, and uh, they 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 have a, a lot of difference. Okay. Um. Again, our our uh, our research team. Uh, today I'd like to show my um, honor uh, and respect to the Dr. Xiong Zhao because she's such a distinguished uh, professor, academic, and a researcher in my country, and she served in the National Health Research Institute. And uh, yeah, and she lead. Uh, a team for many years, and this time, uh, it's honorable that I can use her data, and uh, because uh, she she noticed uh, how the middle age um men and women live a healthy life, so since uh, fifty five years old, they try to um conduct a long term longitudinal follow up study since uh, 2008. Okay, this is Taiwan. They try to um 
uh, collect the data from the north, central, south, and it's part of Taiwan. And Kilong is in the north part of Taiwan. And uh, this three, uh, they collect the data from uh, seven lo locations. And we can separate them from uh, into the rural and the urban area. Okay, and uh, yeah, and uh, today I think uh, the important concept we'd, we'd like to explore is the uh, uh, community and poverty, health and the community participation and urbanization. This is uh, uh, my con uh, conceptual framework. What's the difference um, between the gender um, influence uh, their health and urbanization and uh, what's a different distribution about the social demographic uh, data and how all these uh, uh, different factors influence the uh, community involvement. Uh, in our study, there are three items to measure the uh, community involvement. We like to know how people interact with their neighbor and how do they uh, feel about their neighbor, friend friendly or unfriendly. And the third item is participation uh, about the community activity. Uh, include the classroom meeting, self-improvement activity organized by the community. I think the uh, Vicky, uh, our first speaker, already introduced a lot of examples about the community participation in this part. So we'd like to interest in, uh, are there any um, potential background will influence how they participate in the community activity? First question we'd like to explore, what are the gender differences in social economy status and their health? Does gender cause poverty? However, I would like to say it's difficult to measure the poverty. And uh, when we try to ask uh, our, our uh, subjects uh, their income, they tend to refuse to answer this question. Therefore, we uh, mostly use the perceived economy hardship to answer this question. Yeah, the, the first one you can see, oh, there's a lot of difference between men and women. Yeah, no matter what in age, education, marital status, and number of children or family size, or uh, their working status, yeah, um, yeah. The men tend to work a lot, uh, and uh, they have a higher education. Okay, the widow tend to be the woman a lot, and uh, but from our study, it's interesting. There's no significant difference between house ownership and the perceived economy hardship between men and women. Next, we'd like to uh, explore um, the difference between the, uh, the men and women's health. Yeah, not surprisingly, the men show the strong physical component, but no difference uh, about the mental condition. And uh, also, next one we like to test about uh, how about the perceived economy hardship when women feel that or oh, it really will influence uh, women's physical and uh, mental health. So it can uh, conclude that uh, the perceived economy hardship will influence our health. Okay, we can uh, give a short summary about the first question. Yeah, we can see a lot of difference between men and women, no matter their education and uh, working status. And uh, men tend to work, uh, work and uh, most women uh, are housekeepers. And uh, when the physical condition become bad, it's important, uh, it's influenced them a lot. 
Okay, and the household ship and the perceived economy hardship is a uh, has not such a big difference between men and women in Taiwan. Next question we'd like to ask about what impact the community involvement. Yeah, we have three items uh, uh, answer try to um solve this problem. First, yeah. I think the physical is strong factor will influence men and women participate in their in their community activity. Next one, we try to uh, measure economy hardship. Uh, yeah, no matter the economy hardship, I think the physical still has a, uh, play the strong role in how they participate in community activity. And this one, we try to compare the interaction with the neighbor and uh, how do they feel about their neighbor are friendly? And also how do they participate in the community activity? Interestingly, yeah, the urbanization, the in rural area, they tend to interact with their neighbor and neighbor more friendly and in education yeah there's a different and marital status a widow interact more with their neighbor however they tend to not feel that their neighbors are friendly and the number of children also have some impact okay and uh, yeah and yeah and uh, the current working status um okay um a retired person, okay, retired person interact with the um, neighbor more and they also participate in community activity. And also unemployed uh, person interact with the uh, neighbor more. And smoking will influence how they interact with their neighbor. And last item, I think it's important. PESD, it's uh, the scale to measure a man who has a depression, a different degree. If it's uh, uh, larger than the sitting, it show the uh, most severe depression. We can see if uh, the woman has a severe depression, they tend to not to interact with their neighbor or feel their neighbor are friendly or participate in the community. Okay, that's a uh, the summarize. Yeah, I think the uh, depression, like uh, it's a big issue about loneliness or depression, will influence how they uh, join the community, and education. Uh, low uh lower education uh tend to uh interact with their neighbor but do not participate in community activity. And uh, the smoking or the poor physical health will influence their participation. And Thai women interact with the neighbor and the community activity a lot. And widow, yeah, we just mentioned, interesting. They interact with their neighbor, but do not feel they are friendly. Yeah, we can see the social demographic data really uh, influence their uh, interaction with the people. The final question we'd like to explore, what's the difference between the urban and the rural areas in Taiwan? Uh, yeah, you can see, wow, it's also, there's a significant uh, difference between uh, women live in rural and the urban area. Yeah, no matter education or marital status, and uh, yeah, yeah, you can see a lot of difference. Okay, um, the urban area tend to, yeah, probably next one we can see. Okay. Um, okay, the um, rural area has a lower education level and uh, tend to have a more veto and the both uh, women and uh, they tend to live alone without children or more children with them 
or they have uh, um, yeah, like uh, the number of children and family size, and the rural area has more house ownership and uh, working status in rural area, they tend to employee and uh, self-employee or unemployee. It seems that the, the job is important for a rural area woman. Uh, although they own their house more than the uh, urban area woman. An uh, urban area woman, they tend to be the housekeeper and retired person. And uh, rural area women also perceive more economic hardship. And uh, they tend to interact with the neighbor more and feel their neighbors are friendly. And there's uh, no no significant difference between a rural and the urban area to participate in community activity. And here we try to explore the perceived health uh, status with uh, uh, this group of uh, people. We can see in rural area, no matter physical or mental component will influence how they participate in the community activity more than the urban. And the uh, more detail about the, this major, we use SF12. Uh, and then you can see uh, only in the physical condition will influence how people in rural and urban area will attend the community activity. But the other parts about the general health vitality, social functioning, and the role limitation for the emotional problem or mental health in rural area has a big influence for their participation. But in urban area, there's uh, such a big difference or big impact. So from this uh, 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 finding, we give some uh, small summary. Yeah, you can see all oh, the different pictures between the rural area and the urban area. Yeah, we just mentioned about that. Yeah, interesting. In rural area, it seems they are more humanistic uh, interaction with their neighbor. Uh, and the urban area, they tend to have the higher education, the more the both and the uh, separated. And uh, the children in the media size and the housekeeper and the retired, but they uh, how they participate in commun community activity is not significant important for them to live in the rural area. Uh, when the women in rural area, they have a health problem no matter physical or mental, it impedes their participate in the community activity. However, in urban area, probably they have more activity uh, or resources uh, for their daily living. Uh, the community activity seems not so apparent uh, sig play the significant role for the wo uh, woman in rural area. Therefore, yeah, we can conclude that uh, we we need to notice how how women live in different areas, especially in the rural area. We should not ignore uh, ignore them. No matter probably they got um physical dis disability or got a severe depression, then they stayed at home. And but in in rural, uh, in urban area, probably they have a more traffic uh, solution or more activity they they can attend in. Therefore, we can conclude that uh, the design sustainable community is so impo important. Like a uh, wiki, yeah, they make uh, such a versatile uh, program for the woman. It's so important. Um, so, yeah, and they also try to strengthen the local economy, health, and and also, I think in not only, uh, there's also condition in urban area, yeah, the, the 
the people's interaction uh, in rural area is so common. Uh, so therefore, but I think there's also some conflict like widows, uh, uh, widows, uh, how, sh how, how they play their role with their neighbors. It's uh, so many uh, phenomena, we better think about that. Um, so I think not only we try to uh, try to has a, uh, has a uh, notice on the sustainable development, not only in, in the urban, also in the rural. And uh, both of them have a different characteristics. So we'd better um, move into the global uh, perspective. Yeah, I think uh, my vision, our vision is that uh, make it cyclic, more it flow, more you have more inter interaction between the rural and the urban area. We learn each other. And also, uh, I think the service has a big, big, um, uh, an important idea about community-based tourism is it, uh, it bring out uh, more circulation and uh, more interaction um, among people. So I think uh, the we better is um, uh, elaborate the idea about neighborhoods and to create the harmonies uh, between people among people and we become a, a worldwide citizen. Yeah, that's uh, what, what we think. And thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Professor Shi. What an insightful picture of the life, the demographic situations in Taiwan. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and I hope you guys are not puzzled by all the data presented before. And for me, I have learned a, a, a bunch from it. And we can see that uh, service as a group of uh, people of passion and goodwill are uh, also a group of people that are that have a lot of talents. And uh, with this bunch of people, they have already building and changing something good uh, be that goes beyond their own village. And that is service. And uh, in terms and and, and uh, we see that Service Taiwan is one of the uh, one of the fastest growing chapters of Service International. So now I will be honored to introduce you guys the current General Secretary of Service Taiwan, jo Miss Jojo Jen, and she's going to give us a picture of how they can reach such a rapid growth and. Uh, and, 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 and such a good uh, fame in the Taiwan society. So please join me and welcome Miss Jojo Jen. Thank you, thanks Jack. Uh, thanks uh, Jack. Um, uh, my topic is talking about the strategy partnership for service Taiwan growth. And uh, as you know, SDG the 17th is a partnership but how can we use a partnership to leverage everything together? So here is, uh, um, as a uh, Vicky and also Professor Shu Zhen, they all mentioned the age society. Uh, it's a very seriously. So the number of people aged 65 and older is expected to double over the next three decades, reaching 1.6 billion on 2050. Asia is leading this trend with Hong Kong, South Korea, and Japan expected to have the highest share of people age 65 and older by 2050. So as you know, this year, 2024, is our Service International uh, celebrate 75th anniversary. So if we, um, as a, um, you know, if we grow up like uh, we are already age, we are already 75 years old. So due to Taiwan, uh, you know, uh, in uh, South Korea, we are the bottom two country and uh, fast fertility decline in the recent decade. So the pace of aging in Taiwan has been continually accelerating. 
Taiwan will become a super age society next year in 2025. So what we can learn from those country in the early stage of the demographic shift have the opportunity to play ahead and manage the challenges. Uh, let's look at this invisible disability as uh, uh, Vicky just talking about the psychological poverty and also Professor Shu Zheng also mentioned about the poverty. But in Taiwan, what is the real poverty means for us? Uh, for example, lots of people, uh, you look like a, you look like you look at them, they are just like a normal people. It's uh, no difference. But it's uh, some people, there are some uh, some sim symptoms happen as mental illness or some people are, have a slow response, easy, angry or whatever. OK, so such kind of uh, uh, symptoms or uh, something happen, maybe not for a long time, but uh, just uh, suddenly happen. Uh, so some people, when you getting old, um, in my society in Taiwan, and we call that as a, another kind of a discrimination, especially for the elder people. So how can we not only uh, uh, solve this uh, problem and also uh, give them an add-on value? Because uh, if we see them as a value and then we can cover those negative um, image. So from... Uh, Last century, we're talking about the diversity, but this century we call it is the inclusion. Can we inclusion everybody come together? So that's why we're thinking using strategy partnership to leverage our strengths and reduce invisible disability. And what is the invisible disability to our service international? Look at this way. If um, our service is a traveler, and the host they host together. So can we build up like a look at traveler? Now we have a single parent, we have uh, elderly people, we have a couple, we have a uh, um um people with the uh, younger children travel. So can we not only one host uh or urban or um uh, uh, rural host and we can uh help each other become a community base and then become a strategy partner like a, uh, if, if we can use a local learning center and local university and local um, city government and also other NGO together and then we can make a big big different change so this is how we uh, we uh, practical great practice in Taiwan and for Asia people, respect elderly is a very normal behavior. We will provide uh, normally the kindness to those elderly traveler with their family. For example, if in Taiwan, if you're over age 80 years old, and uh, normally we will request your um, have to company with the uh, elder uh, together. Okay, so uh, since our service uh, international, um, we are not an English native speaker, as you know. So our elderly family, they will not speak English and even they will not sign up as a service international member. So I will suggest and then we like uh, young people, uh, more uh, younger than 18 years old, and then they join service free. So how about those elder people, they join service as one of our family should be free too, okay? So can we have a more human and empathy approach to those age society members? Um, so, and also um, beyond those uh, communication barrier, as you know, those uh, communication actually, uh, you can see from Vicky's uh, learning center, even though those uh, native uh, uh, Taiwanese, they don't speak Mandarin, they don't speak uh, English, they don't speak Korean, Spanish, but they get along well with each other, with our traveler from all over the world. So it's a really, uh, it's really funny. So uh, can we, there is a, some issue I would like to ask you guys. Uh, can we expect economy reason, uh, expect, um, I mean, 
um, not only the uh, economy reason, what else challenging for both service hosts and traveler at the super age society? How can we avoid invisible disability of elderly instead of creating an able environment for healthy aging with service? How can we build up a successful aging society with service in Taiwan? So I would like to share a little story about this. Uh, uh, during pandemic period, we cannot go anywhere, as you know. Uh, in July of 2021, our Taiwan senior member, Mr. Stephen Yan, Yan Shizhe, he has received an email from France. Uh, the, C, the sender is the younger sister of our France service member who took care of her elder sister. Uh, her elder sister suffered as Hammer and at the last stage. So uh, her sister just face, facing death, but remained clear minded and sometimes murmuring service Taiwan, Taiwan, Taiwan. So she decided to send uh, Stephen an email and ask him. Uh, what is a good dose of memory, good good memories uh, about her elder sister? So Stephen just quickly organized this Zoom meeting. You can see those people. And at, uh, at that time, they host or they host the, the lady from France, from France. So we quickly send their message to, um, you know, to to wish her better. So, and it's a surprising us, you know, we, we are just a host or the host and she's just a traveler come to Taiwan, but at her last minute in her life, she, she just remember us. Look at this way. So we're thinking about um, what is a life should be. Um, you know, and also one of our member, Thomas Guo, also visit her in 2016 before in, in France before uh, she suffered this uh, Alzheimer. So you never know, be a uh, be a traveler or a host or day host could be such a meaningful to others' life. Just the moment you share. So uh, I would like to use the uh, Mark Twain set. Travel is fatal to produce prejudice, um, be gauntry and narrow mindedness. So, can we, uh, from diversity to inclusion, from our pride and prejudice to humanity, and also only love and sharing is the key. So, when um, to celebrate, when we celebrate Serva's 75th anniversary, and to Bob uh, Lewider with love, I would like to use this uh, special opportunity at the CSW 68 moment to give thanks. Uh, life is too short. Let's make a meaningful life for others and for ourselves. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jojo. Wonderful, wonderful. I just can, I can only say wonderful. Um, 75 years ago, a conscientious young American named Bob, together with his friends in European, uh, in Europe, at the shambles of World War II, decided to start a course to open the doors of different people and welcoming the world. And through this way, they believe that we can truly achieve world peace. 75 years later today, we see that numerous people are, have already gathered under the flag of that course, and the name of the course is Service. In this, I see something I learned from Bible, and allow me to quote it. If a grain of wheat never dies, it remains only a single seed, but the truth is, it must fall to the ground and die to make many, many. So here I call to your guys to join service and especially at this time of conflict and turmoil, we are more than ever before 
in need of the spirit of service. So thank you very much for all your participation today. And before we jump into the next session, which is the Q&A session, may I suggest you guys to turn on your camera so that, uh, so that Daniel, our IT support officer, can give us a good picture. Yay. OK. OK. To you, Dan, please. We're getting uh, people turning on their cameras. So we'll wait just a second more and see if there's anybody else. We got Hamsa. We got people from all over the world. Vienna. I don't always say this right. Kyrgyzstan, India, China, Canada, Peru, Taiwan, Mexico, Iran, Spain, and even more, I'm sure. That's just the ones I could tell. Okay, I'm going to take a picture. Smile for the camera. One, two, three. Okay, that looked good. Actually, actually, that looked good. I think I got everybody. Okay, great. Thank you, Dan. Okay, now is um, our cute question and answer session. Uh, should you guys have any questions, please post it in the chat room. And uh, I have already seen. I have already seen some some some. I've already seen some some questions coming up. First of all, um, someone just mentioned that they want to be a volunteer to teach English in Taiwan. So, so, Jojo, Vicky, any one of you can give uh, some further suggestions or guidance to this person. Yeah, sure, no problem. Yeah, and uh, send us the email and we can uh, think about how to do it. Uh, we still develop uh, some uh, indi indi indigenous, indigenous, indigenous tribe uh, this year, later of this year. And indigenous tribe in Taiwan, there are uh, lots of uh, tribe in Eastern part of Taiwan, that is a uh, Taidong and Hualien, and they, uh, lack of uh, lots of uh, teaching uh, materials. I mean, especially the English teacher. Um, well, any kind of a uh, language is good for them. So uh, once we have a, a community-based uh, um, uh, center there, and I will, uh, I will let you know. Okay, thanks. Great, thank you, Jojo. Okay, um, time's running out, and there. Okay, we have another question. It is from Hunter. So Hunter would love to give the question to Professor Xi. He says, uh, Professor Xi, you talked about the problems facing women in urban and rural Taiwan. Do you think it is a special case for East Asian society or a universal problem? Oh, okay. I think that's a good question, but uh, it's very uh, large. Um, According to the definition about the urbanization, I think uh, um, that uh, you move from the uh, countryside into the city. So I think the answer will be quite a relative, not the absolute. And uh, I think the um, different country has a different culture. Um, yeah, like the uh, economy, uh, Pacific economy or uh, hardship or the house ownership. I think it's uh, uh, interestingly because probably the widow live longer uh, than the man, so she inherited the house or uh, her husband loved her and uh, gave her some, share her with the property. So I think the different culture might have uh, different ideas. And, uh, uh, but the urbanization like uh, education or traffic, um, you can easy, um, can be easy to have a, a good traffic condition. However, in the urban area, it can be a, a heavy traffic jam. It's also cause problems. So I think that's an interesting question, but uh, I can just uh, give a general idea, but there's uh, 
still have some different uh different parts that you need to go to the um local and then local area then you need to know the uh how people think then you 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 might get the answer in different uh sides okay but i like your question thank you okay great thank you very much and then i think the next question should go to miss vicky leo uh it is from ham savahini and the question is, what is the right time to come and how long can we offer to be a volunteer? Yeah, uh, um, now serve as a uh, international we said is style uh, program, but uh, we do have uh, some program for the elderly people or just like Vicky said, if you have uh, any talent, she will accept that <laughs> and she yeah. may she can make arrangement for you guys. Yeah. And so I believe uh, you just uh, propose to her about whatever talent you have and what is uh, your available time and she will make arrangement in the north of Taiwan. But also we also build up a JIE as a community base. Uh, recently we have a um we have a church member just join as our member so we can host them uh, people there and have a long stay and slow travel and also uh um, you know, get involved with the community. So that's uh, exciting to us. <laughs> Thank you. If you come to Kilong, I can manage you. No problem. Yeah. Hey, great. Time is running out. I have to call a stop here. And uh, um. Uh, I would love to give the special thank you to uh, Mr. Daniel Bell, who is our IT support officer today. And uh, uh, I guess you guys already know him because he took a group photo for us. And uh, also, I would love to give special, special grat my gra special gratitude to the three keynote speakers from South Taiwan, Ms. M Vicky Liu, Professor Shi, and, uh, and Jojo, and also everyone. Without you guys, we cannot make today's event such a successful and wonderful one. And uh, don't 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 forget that we still have uh, two uh, two other events waiting for you guys uh, online. And if you guys uh, can develop some interest through our introduction uh, towards Service International, uh, please search online and join us. And uh, I think you have already seen that. Uh, uh, a lot of individuals can make a true change and make a real impact on this world and reach the world peace. Okay, thank you guys very much. I guess that is for today. Yay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Sorry, 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 sorry. My bad, my bad, my bad. Um, uh, oh, May from Taiwan wants to say something. Hi, hey, May. Oh, Hello. May oh, just um. Ni, ni the microphone may okay. Yep, I'm asking here to. There you go. Yes, because it's blocked. Yes. Um, uh, I want to say something, and then because we have actually Service Taiwan has more ideas, but I think the time is limited. So Jojo maybe uh, didn't mention too much, but as I understand. Um, our um, we are thinking a project. It's especially for service. It's which is now you know we have a lot of uh, seniors in our service communities. Uh, so in you are probably you already retired, and some of you may feel you are not so valuable in your society. But you know, interesting thing is when you move to another country, to another countries, you become valuable again. <laughs> For example, you speak English. Okay, in our country, we speak Mandarin and Chinese, but when you, we need someone to teach us English, especially in rural communities, no, no, not so many foreigners 
go there, visit there. So if you speak English and you can come here to teach this community seniors English. So you become very valuable <laughs> when you show up. You become, you speak English, you become valuable and you just introduce, you don't have to do something special. You just uh, speak English, your language, and you show uh, what happened in your country. You just introduce your country and people will feel, wow, 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 because everyone is curious about a different culture. So when you move to another country, you become valuable. And secondly, I want to uh, say is uh, because some seniors, um, you may feel too tired because our policy, service policy is you stay in host family for only two nights, but to seniors that's too short and it's a trouble to move too often. So we may uh, we want to design a program at least a week. It's a seven day project. So you can stay in a host family for one week. Then that's uh, suitable for seniors. And then uh, just like uh, last time we host a, a member from India, it's Ashoka in Kilong in Viki as community. And we, dis, uh, we design a program and he, he and his wife uh, to show us how to do uh, yoga and cooking, cooking uh, India food. It's a very easy to learn, right? But uh, to us, it's a very interesting, very excited to see Indians cook Indian curry in Kilong in remote area and the local seniors they are very excited to dance with the korean something like this and so it's what we are going to do uh, so i hope this kind of project can make our uh, members serve as members uh, especially senior members you will feel you are, again, you are very valuable <laughs> in another society and to make all of us feel very happy and we have an even better life. That's it, thank you. Thank you, May, wonderful, yay. So now you guys have more, 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 more reason to go to Taiwan, to meet uh, those service Taiwan, Taiwan, ta Taiwan members. Okay, great. Uh, okay, right. Oh wow, we have to say that the great party always need to to go to 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 go and end, but that is not the end of our, our friendship. Thank you guys for being here, and uh, let's keep chatting on other platforms. And uh, I think you guys will, will will find each other on Facebook, on Instagram, and on website. Okay, so that's it. Thank you very much.